is how my iPhone is set up to ensure that I am super productive throughout the day and stay motivated and on track to achieve all of my goals. I have a home base where I keep all of my primary apps and things I need pretty constantly every time I'm on my phone. A wealth page, which I use to keep track of all my finances and where I do any sort of investing. And a mindset page, which is when I'm doing any sort of learning at university or trying to work on my side hustle, this YouTube channel. And I can switch between all of these pages really, really easily with this little widget on the top. As always, the timestamps are on screen and they're down below in the description if you want to skip around, but that's enough hanging around. Let's get right into the video. So one of the fundamental things you need to understand if you want to set this predictive system up on your iPhone is that the number one factor at play here is simplicity. So you'll see that I just have four pages on my iPhone. If you're familiar with the channel or you've seen any other videos of mine, you'll understand and you'll be aware of the fact I'm a huge proponent of the three pillars of life. And basically, I think that there's three main things that you need to balance in your life if you want to feel happy and fulfilled. We need to balance our health, we need to balance our wealth, and we also need to balance our mindset. And as you can see now, if I flick through those different pages, I have a page that kind of corresponds to each of those three pillars. And you'll also see as I click on the buttons on the widget to cycle between those pages that I only actually have an individual page full of apps for each of those areas. And this exemplifies the first thing we need to do to build this productivity system. You need to go through and conduct an audit of all of your different apps. The iPhone is really, really cool because there's three different options of what you can do when you're doing this audit of your apps. You can straight up delete the app, no questions asked. I'd recommend doing this if you have any sort of social media that's not crucial, any sort of apps that you don't recognize, you haven't used for ages, just holding up your storage, kind of basic things like that. The second thing you can do is you can actually just hide an app from the, the homepage. So if you hold down on the app icon, click remove app, you can click remove from home screen. And then once that happens, you can just scroll all the way to the, the left, all the way to the, the right hand side and sort of search in your app library. And although the app isn't displayed on your home screen or any of your pages, it's still on your phone. And the final thing you can do when you're doing this app audit is something really cool. And I can almost guarantee you've never heard about it before. So if you head into your iPhone settings, head over to general and down to iPhone storage, you have an option there of seeing all of your different apps. And this is a great way of starting the, the app audit because you can actually filter by last used date. But that's not the real benefit at play here. If I decide that I want to delete one of these apps, let's say, okay, here, for example, then we click on the app. I actually have the option to offload the app. So if you're not sure whether or not you'll need it again in the future, you can keep all of the data, like your passwords, all of like your progress, whatever on the app, but then not actually have it on your phone. So it's a really good way of kind of also reducing your screen time. But in terms of the apps that you should really think about keeping when you're going about this app audit, I highly recommend you guys using some sort of reminders app and putting that on your home base. You also need some sort of calendar, obviously your email app. In terms of your health, I really recommend having some sort of tracker. So as you can see here, I have a widget from my Apple Watch. But if you don't have one of those, that's totally fine. You can also use the health app or even something like Strava or Nike Run Club if you're into running, any other sort of sport. It's really crucial that you have that kind of numerical way of tracking your progress and seeing how you're getting on. In terms of your wealth, you want to have obviously any bank sort of apps you use. It's also really cool as well if you're into investing and that kind of personal finance, you can have a widget that displays all of the different stocks and shares you might be sort of involved in. And then in terms of your mindset, obviously goes without saying, you wanna carry over that reminder app. And then some sort of note-taking app is really, really crucial here, whether that's Notion, sort of Evernotes, GoodNotes, whatever you use, that's something I recommend to keep. And they're the crucial sort of things you should have on each page. And if you feel at this point, like you're not ready to delete all of your social media, I recommend just hiding it, removing it from your home screen. And then at least it makes the barrier to kind of opening the app a little bit harder because you have to go all the way to the sidebar, all the way to the app library and find like Instagram, for example, through that. So that's a really good like bonus tip that I can give you guys. So now at this point, you should have all of the apps that you want to keep 
and all of these apps should correspond to one of those four pages, your home base, your health, your wealth, or your mindset. But now you might be wondering how you go from this kind of basic setup with all of your apps to that kind of really productive, aesthetic looking iPhone that I showed you right at the start of the video, where you have one page for each of those areas, those four areas, and you can cycle between them with a widget at the top. And that's what we're gonna look at doing now. So ideally, what you wanna do now is drag all of those apps into place. And what I mean by that is anything you want on your home base, you should just add onto one page, swipe to the next, and then repeat the same for mindset. So you want kind of a basic skeleton of how your iPhone setup is gonna look. And obviously as well, if you wanna add any apps, this is the time to do it as well. And if you don't know how to add these cool kind of widgets, I will show you how to do that now. You just hold down on any app, add edit home screen, and then in the top left, you'll get an option to search for widgets. Now, some ones that I really recommend you doing is having a big sort of clock on your, your home base. I think it's nice to have it there because it's a lot more accessible and easy to see, believe it or not, than having it in the top left of, of your phone. Like I said before, having a, a sort of a tracker on your health page is really cool. Having that as a widget so you can see everything at a moment's glance. The same is kind of true for wealth when you're seeing your stocks. And then in terms of mindset, it's really cool to have any sort of calendar at the bottom in a big widget. And it's awesome as well because you can cycle through different size widgets and really play around to get the page looking exactly how you want it to look. So in that sense, it's really customizable. Okay, and now here's something you probably didn't know. If you hold down on the app icon, go to edit home screen again, and then you tap on that kind of little button in the bottom, just above the four apps and the bottom of the iPhone, you'll see that you get the option to kind of select and deselect pages. So right now I have those four main sort of pages, and the way we do that is by using focus mode. So if you've never done that before, you're not feeling too confident with how it works, make sure you listen closely. So you're gonna to wanna to head over to settings again and scroll all the way down to focus. And as you can see, my focus modes are already sort of set up. And for you, if you've not used this before, you might have some sort of default ones like the do not disturb or even the sleep. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some custom ones that we can link each page to. So if you just tap on the top right sort of plus button, then head on to custom. You can then name your focus mode, essentially whatever you like. So let's say I'm making a new one, just for the purposes of kind of showing you guys, you can select any of these colors, so it's fully customizable and you can select any sort of icon. Then you wanna just cycle through, click customize focus. And the crucial thing you've gotta do here is head over to customize screens, tap that. So let's say for example, this was my health page, I would just select the page with all of my health apps, so my Pure Gym app, my kind of Strava, and my Apple Watch. And then that would link the focus mode just with that page. So you repeat that same process for each of the four other pages, your home base, your health, your wealth, and your mindset. And then once you've done that, we can really get clever with the way that we use this productivity system. And the best thing is that you can make it completely customizable if you don't like the way that my phone looks. But I'll be honest with you guys, this bit was a little bit tricky when I was first starting out with this productivity system. So I think if you have to rewatch the video a couple of times, that's completely fine. Try not to get too overwhelmed and I'll try and explain things as clearly as I can. So what I need you guys to do is head over and search for the shortcuts app. Click that and you should be greeted with a screen that looks a little bit like mine. However, you probably won't have those focus modes at the top, which I already have set up. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the top right of this screen, click the plus button, and then you'll be greeted with this page. And then at the top, you can just rename the shortcut to health. And again, play around with how it looks aesthetically. So you can change the icon. You can also change the color, you know, whatever sort of thing. You, you like. And then after we've made those aesthetic choices, we need to set the focus mode so that it actually turns on. To do that, you wanna click add action, search for focus mode, and then click that set focus button down at the bottom. And you wanna turn whatever focus mode you've just created on until turned off and then just click done when you've finished. And the key thing is you need to repeat this process for each of the different pages you have. 
So your home base, your health, your wealth, and your mindset. But hopefully it's a little bit quicker each and every time. Okay, and now the crucial part of this process is actually setting up this widget so that you can click between the different pages at a moment's notice. Okay, so you wanna head over to one of your pages and we're gonna add a widget. So if you remember, like I showed you before, we just hold down on an app icon, click edit home screen. And then in the top left, we're gonna hit that plus sign. And then when it says search for widget, we're gonna search for the shortcut widget and head on over to the shortcut widget that has four different kind of buttons, four different things you can cycle between. And then add that to the very top of your page. And like we've just done with setting those shortcuts for each page, we need to repeat the same thing. So you need to go through each of your home base, your health, your wealth, and your mindset and set this widget up in the same way. But after you've done that, there's one more final thing and final way that you can customize your iPhone productivity system. And it's probably the coolest thing out of the bunch. So if I then switch my iPhone off, turn it on and then hold down just at the bottom of the lock screen, you might have to put your password in or your face ID. If you hold it down, you'll see kind of a little button in the very bottom of that page that you can click on. And you can link a focus mode to a different lock screen. That's how I get the different color backgrounds for each of my pages. So if I want to change how my health page looks, I just repeat the same process by clicking on that button, clicking health, and then I can customize my wallpaper from that point. So whether I like this background, you know, you can really play around with it, customize it in whichever way you like, whichever way kind of appeals to you. And then if you just repeat that process and make a new lock screen for each and every one of your pages, kind of like we've been doing before. And if you really want to boost your productivity, you're going to want a way to make continuous progress towards your goals, even if you're not a very disciplined person. And the absolute best way and the best tool to do this is to use did do list. So to find out the easy way of how you can get started with this great technique, you're going to want to watch this video here. So I'll see you all there.